Welcome back. Our profile of icons of Italian luxury continues in Florence, where Salvatore Ferragamo, Italy's most famous shoemaker, set up his business in 1938 after a sensational stint in the United States. It's impossible to talk about Florentine luxury without mentioning Salvatore Ferragamo. Now, Ferragamo wasn't actually from Florence, but his name and his brand has become synonymous with the city. The Museo Salvatore Ferragamo follows his journey from Italy to Hollywood and back to Florence. The historic Palazzo Spiniferoni on Piazza Santa Trinita along Florence's high fashion street Via de Tornabuoni is a global headquarters and museum of the Ferragamo brand today. The Museo Ferragamo houses temporary exhibits related to fashion and Italian culture in general, the company's extensive archives, and a large historic collection of shoes and lasts Salvatore Ferragamo created for Hollywood celebrities and international personalities. It's hard to believe Salvatore began his career in poverty, working as a village shoemaker's apprentice at the age of nine in the south of Italy. The naturally gifted shoemaker migrated to America in his teens and, armed with luck and talent, rose to become the favorite of celebrities. The temporary exhibition, Italy and Hollywood, is in a way the story as well of Ferragamo's journey to the heart of the American film industry, where his shoe empire began in the 1920s. The exhibits highlight the influence of Italy on film themes and costume and production design. It's a tribute as well to the many Italian immigrants who found their way to Hollywood as actors and filmmakers, and in the case of Ferragamo, as shoemaker of the stars. It's almost like he was a Hollywood director himself. Yes. Not yes. just a shoemaker. No, he was a production only. designer, yes. a director, a producer. And uh, he here, was perfect for Hollywood. And it's very modern <laughs> because the client, when they arrived in the shop, uh, he wanted that they have received a uh, um, shopping experience. So in the middle, he was of one the of the shop, first to introduce that whole yeah. concept of the the wow, wow, uh, the and, wow when you enter a store. And the, in the center of the shop, there was a sofa like that with a, a special Renaissance textile. Mm -hmm. So all the idea of uh, Italy. Ferragamo was a gifted shoemaker, and his obsession with a perfect fit endeared him to his A-list customers. But he was also a marketing genius with a knack for theater and for the perfect location. And when the uh, cinema industry moved to Hollywood, he uh, decided to open a new shop in Hollywood. And uh, he selected uh, a, an original shop of shoes that was uh, in, exactly in the front of the Egyptian theater, so the best location because at the Egyptian theater, there were all the premiere of the new movies. So the stars and the red carpet, is that in front Was of he the... already famous at that yes, point? Yes, he was already famous. His cleverly named Hollywood boot shop and Italian Renaissance style interiors recreated in the exhibit was a hit in Tinseltown and with the legendary actors whose shoes are displayed in the Museo's permanent exhibit. His close relationship with Hollywood bigwigs and a successful stint creating a period footwear actors and extras wore in the set made him an insider in Hollywood, a role he maximized to cement his reputation and his brand's association with Italian luxury and Hollywood glamour. He made a special contest for the, the most beautiful legs okay. and uh, with a movie director okay. and uh, Griffith was oh. the movie director okay. and the winner received a part in a movie of Griffith. The second received the Fergama shoes. <laughs> so there was a, a good link with cinema, with the craftsmanship, with the Italian culture, all together in one product. Though he made shoes for leading men like Douglas Fairbanks and Rudolf Valentino, he was especially popular with the top actresses of the era. They loved that his shoes were not just beautiful, but extremely comfortable too. All the shoes here were made by hand, mm. and each shoe was made for a special client. It was a real special edition for the VIP customer. 
So uh, each shoe was different from so the it other. So it is one shoe per client. There's yeah. like in a way bespoke yes, shoes. Yes, made on feet. So it was very important uh, the shopping experience because the client entered in the shop. There was uh, the first uh, meeting uh, and uh, they selected together uh, the right uh, model. And after there was uh, the ceremony. So he created of, this ritual. Uh, he was a perfect man for Hollywood. Yeah. Not only for Hollywood. For the but world. But uh, <laughs> for <all> women. <laughs> he wanted uh, to transform uh, women. So every woman could be a princess and every princess could be a queen. Now, Salvatore Ferragamo, after a very successful stint in Hollywood, making his name and being personal friends with these celebrities, living with the A-listers, he comes back to Italy. Why? Because uh, he received so big success that he was not able uh, to produce oh. and to create the shoes, respect the orders. And so he decided to come back to Italy because he wanted to open a, a new uh, factory of handmade shoes and send the shoes to Hollywood. Okay. But when he came back, uh, he decided, he selected Florence because of Florence there was uh, a wonderful uh, story about art, but also about craftsmanship. And uh, it was uh, the right place, especially uh, following the point of view of uh, American people. Mm. Because uh, Florence was uh, in the 20s the symbol of Italian culture. It was more famous than Venice, or more Rome. famous than Rome, and so on. And uh, it was a marketing idea. Salvatore Ferragamo passed away in 1960 in his native Italy. But his innovations in shoe design and construction, in marketing and promotions, and his lifelong association with Hollywood glamour are very much alive in the brand he created single-handedly. Up next, a visit to the 26th generation of Italy's most revered wine-making family, Marchesi Antinori, in their new state-of-the-art winery in Chianti, the heart of Tuscany.